Hi kids, my name is Pastor Kobe and I miss seeing you at church. And uh, well, right now at least it looks like it's only going to be a couple more weeks till we can get uh, coming back to church in person. So hope to see you then. Uh, but until then, just hang in there boys and girls, we can get through this. So uh, today we are talking about the Bible. Surprise. Uh, the Bible is God's word and it is our source of truth. And uh, it is something that we depend a lot on, and it's because it's how God chose to reveal himself to mankind. God decided that he wanted to put his word in a book. And uh, so it's important that we understand this book. And uh, so today uh, we're talking about this because um, in our teachings we've been doing on Sunday morning, uh, we just wrapped up uh, the Old Testament two Sundays ago, and we just started the New Testament this Sunday. I wanted to talk a little bit about the structure of the Bible and the way the Bible is laid out. So, if you want to follow along, you can go grab your Bible now. Uh, and if you need some time to do that, you can pause the video here. So, if you're back and you've got your Bible, I want you to open up right to, it's going to be really close to the front, to your table of contents. should be right before anything else, uh, probably right after the title page, really close to the beginning, table of contents, and you can stay right there. That's where uh, we're going to be for pretty much this whole video. It should look something like this. And uh, one of the first things that you notice um, is that there's two big sections. There's the Old Testament and the New Testament. And uh, one of them is much bigger than the other one. The easiest way to understand this, uh, the Old Testament is that this is before Jesus. So everything in the Old Testament is before Jesus came to earth. And then uh, the New Testament talks about Jesus' life when he was on earth, and then a whole bunch of stuff after that as well. So before Jesus, and then during and after Jesus, Old Testament and New Testament. So um, one of the things that is really uh, obvious about the Old Testament and New Testament is the Old Testament is a lot bigger. So if I'm going to turn to where my Old Testament ends and my New Testament begins right here, if you just look at this, it's pretty easy to see. Old Testament is much bigger. There's more books in the Old Testament, and most of them are much longer than the ones in the New Testament as well. So most of our Bible's Old Testament, um, and they're both pieces are very important for us to understand who God is and uh, how he wants us to live our lives. So uh, the Old Testament is also divided up into some other nice sections. So we're going to talk a little bit about, about that as well. Um, here, we have a fancy graph. So this is the Old Testament and all the books in it, and they're also in order here. And a lot of you probably already know the first five, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And those are all grouped together uh, for a reason, because these are all called the law. This is a little bit of history with uh, Genesis, but a lot of these talk about um, how God tells us we're supposed to relate to him and uh, at least how the Jewish people were supposed to relate to him and in the Old Testament before Jesus came. And so a lot of this still applies, and a lot of it doesn't to us as, as Christians anymore who are uh, not Jews. And um, this is a lot of what in the Old Testament, if they're talking about the scripture or the law or about the words that God had given them, this was just these five books most of the time. So as we have been learning and we're talking about the people reading the scripture or the law, it'd be just these five. But we have a lot more of that now. Up next, you see Joshua all the way through Esther. These are history books. These just tell us the story of history of the judges. We learn about uh, Samson and, and uh, Gideon and uh, Ruth. We just talked a little bit about this last Sunday. First and Second Samuel's, and we learned about Samuel and David, and Kings has, and Chronicles have a whole bunch of the kings of Israel and Judah. So these are the history books that just tell the story of God's people. Then up next comes the wisdom books. So these ones don't really tell as much of a story, but they're still really good wisdom about all sorts of things. Uh, the Psalms have lots of songs that help us to understand God and who he is, and uh, Proverbs has advice for everything from love to relationships and money, and, and it's just called one of the wisdom books because uh, these have all kinds of different wisdom on how to live our lives. And then all the rest of the New Testament are these two categories called the major prophets and the minor prophets. 
Now, uh, they're not called these because uh, the major ones were like any cooler or anything. It's just because uh, it's bigger books, so they wrote more, and there's more stuff in there. So the major prophets are big books. We talked a lot about Daniel and Jeremiah as we were learning. And then uh, the minor prophets, we just went through a whole bunch of them. And the last one we just did, remember, was Malachi. So the Old Testament uh, has a bunch of different sections within it that you can you read them all a little bit differently. Um, when you're reading and you'll kind of understand that if you read through some of them some of these tell a story and it reads like a story some of these are just wisdom for how to live life and it doesn't really read like a story so then we just finished Old Testament that brings us to the New Testament and the New Testament also has its own segments within it the first four books Matthew Mark Luke and John are what we call the Gospels these are really important because these are the ones that talk about the life of Jesus. One of the interesting things about the Gospels is that if you read through them kind of one after the other, you'll start to realize, hey, I've heard some of these stories before. By the time you get to Luke, you're like, yeah, I already heard this in Mark. I already heard this in Matthew. And that's okay. And it's good that these things are repeated and, uh, because these are all really telling the same story about Jesus' life. So when they're saying the same thing, that means it's good because these are things that definitely did happen in Jesus' life. Everything you read in the Bible is true. So uh, you can actually get something that's really cool called a harmony of the Gospels. And it'll line all the stories up together so that you can read them all together instead of uh, having some of the repeats when you go through it. Uh, if you want to check that out, those are cool to read too. After the Gospels... Uh, we have the Acts of the Apostles. This is just called the Book of Acts. If you see it in your Bible, it'll probably just say Acts. And uh, this talks about how the church got started after Jesus ascended into heaven. And uh, there's lots of great stories about uh, the miracles that happened and how they taught different people about what was going on with Jesus' gospel and how to follow him. After that, you have a whole bunch of these uh, shorter ones from Romans all the way to Philemon, these are called the Pauline epistles. Epistles is kind of an, uh, a word you don't really hear anymore. And Pauline uh, is not uh, a lady. Pauline, <laughs> Paul is actually a guy. They're called Pauline because they were all written by Paul, the Apostle Paul. You've heard of him and you meet him in the book of Acts too. So these are all letters he wrote to different churches. So Romans was written to, written to the church in Rome. Corinthians to the church in Corinth. And there's two different letters. That's why it's 1st and 2nd Corinthians. And all of these up through Philemon are letters that Paul wrote. After that, there's the general epistles. So the, again, epistle is just another word we use for uh, these short books that were letters that were written. These are called the general epistles. epistles. It's Hebrew, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st, 2nd and 3rd John, and Jude. These are also letters that were written but they were not to uh, like one specific church. They were written to a whole bunch of churches or a whole area or a big group of people at once. Uh, but still have great truths for us in knowing how to follow Jesus. And then the last book in the New Testament is Revelation. Revelation is, uh, so here it's called the Revelation of Jesus Christ. Again, in your Bible, it'll probably just say Revelation. And the Revelation is different than all the other ones because Revelation is a prophecy. All these things in Revelation, uh, at least a lot of them, haven't happened yet. And it talks about signs of the end time and um, how we can know uh, what is going to happen before Jesus comes back again and Judgment Day and a lot of these things uh, about heaven too and, and God making a new heaven, a new earth for us to live in with him at the end. So uh, there are the big pieces of the Bible, remember, the Old Testament and the New Testament and uh, there's smaller pieces within that that can help us to understand what we're reading as we're in the different books of the Bible. Uh, I know we hop around a lot, but uh, there's a reason why with the curriculum we're teaching on Sundays that we're going to be going just right through it. So we're going to be in the Gospels for the next while, learn about the life of Jesus Christ. And I'm excited to be learning about that with you guys as we come back to church and even on the live stream just the next couple weeks. So until then, remember, God is good. Love you guys, miss you, and hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.